Good morning, folks. If any part of you is still sleeping, it's time to wake up. We've got incredible articles and visualizations from our stellar neighborhood to grand cosmic scales, not to mention some space weather as well. Let's start there over at spaceweathernews.com and we're finding pops and surges peripheral to the coronal hole, just trailing another little pop center disk at the end. These are not producing CMEs and the solar flaring from the pops can't bring us up off the baseline. Only two visible sunspot groups on the disk, they're on the western half departing, and there is a good bit of potential magnetically in that new guy on the equator, but so far a dollar short. Let's move next to the solar wind. Particle speed in purple is on the rise along with a shift in the phi angle, in blue. This represents a sector boundary in the solar wind and changing IMF magnetism. It has allowed extrasolar plasma to pour into the atmosphere, ramping the absorption quotients and bringing the KP index back up to 3. Still relatively calm. Well, the largest quake of the last day was a 5.9 that struck Vanuatu. This makes for a definitive but modest earthquake uptick this round. Remember, we had five days of virtual silence after the 7.9, then since the quake watch began, the magnitude has been rising, and while I'd hoped the watch would end last night, we didn't release enough pressure. The quakes were too small. There's still significant chances for IMF interaction with the Earth's magnetic system, and we'll have to have eyes open yet still going forward. Especially since we just took one of the more significant blot echoes of 2017 this morning up in Alaska, more than 100 kilometers down. The four magnitude events have already begun on the west coast and all while the most likely entry point for solar energy in the coming days on the north is the high pressure that's evicted the Aleutian low for the time being, it's also an earth spot running at the coast. Eyes open. Especially because now things get interesting. Folks, you knew it wouldn't be long before the Lani Achaea story got bigger. You might remember from one of the very first deeper looks ever, we said large scale magnetism was the only explanation for the velocity flow. Well, without specifically saying so, it appears there is now agreement. It is a repelling action seen from just one point in space, and they call it the dipole repeller. As you watch, know that this may honestly just be one pole of an even larger structure opposite the shapely attractor, but we can't see past it, and in truth, you don't need to. This is not a gravitationally guided system, and I'd advise you to ignore the repelling and attractive vector's perpendicular orientation at your own risk. When you get deeper into the work and find the non-homogeneous pathways taken by certain vectors through the major densities, you realize the channels may be dictated by major galaxies and galaxy clusters. Folks, this Lani Achaea story isn't going anywhere. I think they're just getting started. And so are we. Up next, we're looking at cosmic jets, but not just any cosmic jets. The big ones, from blazars. This is where electrical theory proponents need to separate the hypotheses from the observations, which are the real gems in all of this. Nevertheless, there is no question that the interactions required to make these features, whether of mainstream described black holes or something more electromagnetic and electrostatic, there is no question that the blazars observed require energy levels beyond our comprehension here in the Milky Way. Let's bring it home, stopping quickly at our star to find Fermi with a trick up its sleeve. Turns out it is detecting way more gamma rays from our sun than expected. And while we knew solar flares were capable of it, like the March 7th, 2012 X-Class event, this is more akin to the terrestrial gamma flash mechanism we see on Earth. Yes, that mechanism on Earth originates at Earth spots like flares come from sunspots on the sun and the icing on the cake. Most gamma emissions have flare genesis on the opposite side of the sun, which Fermi cannot see. Incredible. Folks, stick around just a moment. We've got pressure and radar forecast, followed by shots of our star to close. Website members at suspiciousobservers.org, we very much appreciate your support. It's 4.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.